Now the last step is to add a delete action so we could delete a blog post that we don't want anymore. So this blog post here, we can view the show action and see that specific blog post. And we need to have a delete button somewhere, but I'd rather not have it on this page because this page is for everybody to read the blog post. Really, the only person I want to be able to delete it is me, which probably means that the edit page is a safer location for it. So we can put the delete button inside of our edit page somewhere, and we can go to our edit HTML, and we can have a button to delete, and this delete is going to go to the blog post path for the blog post. And remember, we can use the shortcut and we can say, hey, let's not specify the path, let Rails generate it for us. So that's going to take us to the blog post path. If we refresh our page, we'll see a new delete button here. And this is going to be inside of a form. So the button to works similar to link to, except it uses a button inside of a form that it generates. And this is handy because this is really the way that the browser wants you to make requests like delete. Links are only intended to link a get request to another page. In this case, we're trying to delete something, so we want to make a delete request, so it's best for a form or a button to in Rails. So what we can do is this is given the blog post and it says, oh, this is a blog post that already exists. So we're gonna make it a patch by default, just like our regular forms, but we don't want that. We wanna make it a delete. So we'll say method delete. And this is going to change this line here in our HTML. If we refresh the page, it'll now say it's a delete method. And so when we click the button, it will make a delete request to Rails. So if we look at our network tab, and click delete, we can see that this right here, the red one, headers, uh, it made a post, but if we look at the payload, the method was delete, just like we saw in the form. And then on the Rails side of things, it started a delete request to blog post number four, but we don't have a route for that delete request, so we need to do that next. So again, go back to our routes, we will say, uh, similar to patch, we can then remove that one and say delete blog post with an ID, and we'll take this to the destroy action. And again, we don't need to give this one a name because the get for it already has a name and all of these match the same URL, just different HTTP request types. So if we add the route and click the delete button now, we can go back to our terminal and we can see, oh, that looks like an error. And now it made a delete request, but the error is the action destroy could not be found. So we need to implement the destroy action. Def destroy. And of course, we need to look up the blog post from the URL, blog post find params square brackets ID. And then this time we can say blog post dot destroy and we can leave it as that because we don't need an if statement. The destroy should work, it shouldn't uh, fail, so we can just assume that it's gonna be successful. And then we need to redirect you somewhere once you're done because we can't take you to the blog post that we just deleted because it doesn't exist anymore. So we want to redirect to the root path to say take you back to the home page. So now we'll click the delete button and it takes us back to the home page, and that blog post is gone. And if we look at our Rails logs, our delete to blog post number four, selected the blog post with the ID number four from the database, then it said, we found you, so let's delete you, delete blog post number four, and we can redirect to the home page. So that destroy action works great. But you know what, it's kind of, too easy to delete this blog post. If I accidentally click that button uh, and I meant to click update blog post, it's gonna delete that immediately and I might be unhappy. So what we can do is use some of the built-in JavaScript from uh, Rails and use data attributes on here and we say turbo underscore confirm, are you sure? And we give it that string, and this is from the Turbo JavaScript that Rails 7 and higher comes with by default. 
It's going to see this when you click the button and try to submit the form. It will intercept the form, ask you, are you sure, okay, or cancel. If you cancel, it will cancel out the form submission for you automatically. Um, so now we can click delete. The browser shows the confirm modal. If we click cancel, nothing happens. It stops the request. And if we click okay, it will actually complete the request and allow it through. So that is a feature of Rails' Hotwire Turbo library that is built in out of the box. So when you have in your app JavaScript folder under application JS, when you import Hotwired Turbo Rails or just import Hotwired Turbo, those will uh, automatically set up that data turbo confirm on all of your forms on your page if you would like to use it. You don't have to, it is optional, but it is really useful for situations like this where you don't want to accidentally delete records. So that's great. Now the other thing that I wanna do before we go is a refactoring here. We've had to make uh, six routes here um, or technically seven because we have the root route for the index page. So this is a lot of routes for building out our blog posts. And we have to manually set this up for everything that has to have CRUD, which is create, read, or show, update, and destroy or delete. Um, and CRUD ends up with these seven actions. We've got to add the seven routes. This is a lot to define every time. And if you're using these normal patterns in Rails with these routes and the names, then this is kind of redundant for us to like write every time when we add a project model and a to-do model and everything else that we might add. We're gonna have a giant routes file really fast. So Rails provides a shortcut called resources, and we can say resources blog posts, and this is gonna generate all of these routes for us, and it's also gonna generate a special one for slash blog posts, and that's going to be to the blog posts index action, and it's going to be called blog posts. Um, we put the name on our create action, but this is where it actually gets defined by the resources helper, and we can remove all of the stuff that we wrote and replace it with this. Now, if we remove the root, what will happen is our homepage goes away and it goes back to the Rails default, because when you say resources, it's going to generate slash blog posts and expect you to go there. So we still need the root route in order to tell it to go to the same place. So this will still work, but when we go to the home page, it's also going to render the exact same page as slash blog posts. So that shortcut allows us to navigate to all of these. We can still edit, we can still update, we can still create new blog posts. We can still do our validations. All of those routes are now consolidated into one short little helper that saves us a lot of code. And we can just assume that it's generating all the routes that we would want. And Rails knows that those are expected. So the forms, the controllers, all of that wires up to the names that it generates as well. So we can write very little code and accomplish all the same things with that shortcut helper there. Another little refactoring I would like to do here is you'll notice that our edit page looks up the blog post by ID. Our update also looks up the blog post by ID. Our destroy does the same. And our show action also looks up the record by ID. Seems a little redundant, right? Well, we can use a helper in Rails called before action and you give it a symbol, which will call a method of the same name. So we can say set blog post, and down here under private, we can say set blog post, and this method can set the blog post variable. So if we grab one of those lines of code and we drop it down here, we can replace that on all of these controllers, or at least get rid of it, and we can tell it up here that we only want this to apply to the show action, the edit action, the update action, and the destroy action. And that allows us to go through and we can get rid of it here and here and here. And now this is reused all four times. Another cool thing is you can do the opposite. So you could have only 
Or you could say except, which applies to everything except for these items. So our index didn't need it, our new doesn't need it, and our create doesn't need it, but everything else does. So you can use either the except or the only, depending on how often you need this to be used. Except will basically look up the record by default, um, or only will only do it for those specific actions. So we're gonna use the except version of this because it's just easier, um, and we can then add exceptions as needed, but there's more likely less exceptions than there are not. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can move this rescue down here. So if you ever tried to edit a blog post that does not exist, like some giant number, it will, instead of raising an error, it will take you back to the home page and just say, hey, it wasn't valid. It's obvious it wasn't valid. Uh, we'll take you to the home page. Maybe you want to have the errors, so maybe you don't want this to be there, but it kind of depends on how your application works. A lot of times your 404 page is not very helpful, so it's nice to be able to send some somebody uh, who accessed an invalid page to a better location, but sometimes you maybe want to show them a 404 page instead. So it's kind of up to you, but you can use this optionally as needed. So that is really it for creating our blog in its entirety, but we still have this open for anybody to be able to uh, create and edit and destroy blog posts, which is bad because this is my blog and I don't want anybody else except for me to be able to do that. So the next step is to add authentication using a library called Devise.